city volunteers work together with the temple to provide vegetarian lunch boxes. City volunteers in China provide care for a patient with a plastic anemia. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Sibir Su. Thank you for joining us. Every year around the Tomb Sweeping Festival, a temple in Taipei will hold a blessing ceremony. City volunteers began to connect with the temple and their followers three years ago, providing vegetarian lunch and containers. The kitchen at the Zhongshan Eight Virtues Cultivation Center prepares vegetarian lunch boxes in early April. There are so many people coming for several consecutive days that Zuji has been cooperating with the Linzai Gokuku Zen Buddhist Temple beginning three years ago, sponsoring vegetarian lunch boxes during the Tomb Sweeping Festival. Every year, the Linzai Gokuku Zen Buddhist Temple hosts a blessing ceremony before the Tomb Sweeping Festival. Everyone knows that we are going to make lunch for a prayer ceremony. Everyone kindly sponsors their time and will come to be a volunteer. During the five days of the prayer ceremony, the Taroko Express train derailment occurred. The volunteers who participated also sent their blessings with the most respectful and sincere heart. I wish the injured people of the Taroko Express train have a speedy recovery. I hope the spiritual safety of the deceased can be settled down and the living can be restored to a peaceful life as soon as possible. This kind of vegetarian lunchbox is not only a common thing amongst Buddhists, but also implements a concept of environmental protection and love for the earth. In fact, they are all going to this prayer ceremony, and they all use 20,000 to 30,000 paper lunchboxes. Now we are now using our environmentally friendly bowls, and the situation is much better, as in one year we can save some 50,000 paper lunchboxes. There are more than 300 vegetarian lunch boxes delivered every day. In addition to promoting no killing, many also hope that through a change in appetite, people will calm down and the society will be more peaceful. The derailment of Taroko Express train caused severe death and injuries as many medical staff and rescue workers arrived to help. At the scene, two medical staff from Taipei City Hospital assisted people. One of them was a nursing staff member who was actually a passenger. When the Taroko Express derailed, Taipei Tsuji Hospital head nurse Chen Meihui was seated in the first carriage. Honestly speaking, when it happened, I was seated the entire time. I felt minor shakes, but it wasn't violent. But the force of the accident caused the boy next to me to fly out of his seat and crash into the train door. Because Chen Meihui is equipped with nursing experience, after the derailment, she actively comforted other passengers. She also spread first-hand information out in hopes of letting others know what's happening. On the second day, she returned to the scene, accompanying family members in the morning ceremony to call back the souls of the deceased. One family member told their deceased daughter that playtime was over. Even though you may like playing here, it's time to go home. Hearing these words, my heart ached. I tried to comfort them with Master Zheng Yin's Buddhist teachings by standing by their side. I had no words of comfort, only tears of sadness. It's really a special experience, and I'm very grateful to them. Passenger, Zhiji volunteer, and head nurse Chen Meihui gained more insight in life through this unfortunate accident. I came to realization of why Master Zheng Yan talked about a mission. I should keep going to see the exit. I think that this experience has given me another purpose in life. It is like the light at the end of the tunnel, guiding me to walk forward instead of stopping in this moment. As many rescue workers gathered, Chen Yulong, who was part of a rescue team while being an emergency physician, arrived at the scene around 2 p.m. Though those who were found alive had mostly left the scene, he and other rescue workers still went inside the tunnel. It's a very small chance, but sometimes we encounter signs of life, so we must rescue them. But I still have to be understanding to my team members because of the things we see in the tunnel and the environment we work in. 
Chen Yulong, who worked as an emergency physician for nearly 20 years, had seen many accidents, but the Taraku Express derailment is the most severe he has ever seen. Some body parts were tangled with wires, and when we entered carriages, we saw supposedly families who were going on a trip bring hats, cameras, and luggage, but unfortunately, they encountered the derailment leading up to their deaths. As medical staff continue to help people in need at the scene of derailment, what is left for us is to pray for their well-being and hope that the tragedy may come to an end. In the aftermath of the train accident, city volunteers have been there from day one helping out at the scene of the accident, the hospitals and funeral homes. During this difficult time, volunteers may seem superhuman, but they're just like everyone else. After the derailment, Suji brother Fan Lei reports to the site of the accident each day to help deliver supplies. The journey to get down there is paved with difficulty, but it's nothing compared to the rescue efforts. Going down to the frontline rescue workers, we must use a hand trolley or bring it down in person. The path is near the bottom, where the construction vehicle is slid down to the rescue platform. That path is hard to walk on, let alone moving supplies there, because the ground is mostly just sand. When the wind blows, a dust storm occurs. That place is unbearable. If you stayed there for a long time, such as the rescue team or even the media, you are practically eating dirt. Suji's sister Chen Mushang brought her lunch to the Chongdo train station and ended up giving her lunch to a kid who was rescued from the disaster to eat. But what she saw of the aftermath was worse than she could have imagined. The scenes after was more shocking than ever. The bodies from the second train car arrived, and I saw Suzy brothers wearing their blue and white uniform to help move the body back. There was blood everywhere, but our job is to comfort the survivors, so we had to remain unaffected and strong. We started sutra chanting that day at 2 p.m. at Xinchen train station. We stayed for two hours. During our continuous sutra chanting, in the beginning the disease arrived quickly. Then it got slower and slower as that happened. Our moods felt somber and heavier. Seeing a need, Suji lent a hand. Liu Zhaojun was originally heading home to Kaohsiung, but she changed her plans and went to the hospital to comfort the injured. Meanwhile, some of the volunteers have had to face the devastation of accompanying family members to identify their deceased loved ones. When I went to the mortuary, the first case I helped was a mother from Sichuan who was at the forensic department and she was in such despair during identification. Although the family members said thank you to us, it is us who are grateful to them as they have allowed us to help them through this difficult time in their lives. This group of volunteers put aside their own emotions to follow their moral compass in doing the right thing. In a Taroko train accident, everyone could see the calmness of the passengers who followed the rescuer's instructions. Among them was Mr. Lin, who quarreled with the dead bodies on both sides. Even when he was injured, he tried to help other passengers. <laughs> My wife and I crawled out of the train. The front of the train was shattered directly, and there were many dead bodies around when I walked out. We were sitting at car number eight, which was at the front of the train. I remember hearing the train whistle blast three times. After that, it collided. I was able to come out alive. The first thought in my mind was that if I was still alive, I could breathe. My son, hold on. There's still hope when you're alive. Do you know what I mean? 
Hang in there, okay? Some people passed as soon as they got hit, okay? When we climbed out of the train, we passed by many of their bodies, okay? We are very lucky to be able to come out alive, okay? My first thought after regaining consciousness was very simple. That is, if we were still alive, we should try to help others. We can get out of there together. There was a little girl who was trapped, so we pulled her out and dragged her to the side. My child was also crying, but not because of fear or pain. He said, Dad, my leg is broken and I can't join the track and field team. What should I do? I told him, you don't have to worry about the track team. It's enough you are alive right now. In fact, the moment I was rescued and sent to the hospital, I felt we were alive, so we could have the opportunity to help others on the train. Our life is already a great reward, so as long as we can breathe and live, that's enough. In China, Mongbo Fang Gansu has suffered from a plastic anemia. He has spent all his savings on surgeries. City volunteers delivered financial aid, and in the past four months, they visited him six times. I had a fever with temperature as high as 40 degrees Celsius. I could not drink water. I got up with difficulties. When I was sick, I kept telling myself to stay confident. With confidence, one can succeed. Meng Bo, who suffers from a plastic anemia, has been struggling with the illness. When he was 13, he lost three fingers on the right hand due to a firecracker accident. Therefore, he once lacked confidence. In the past, I had to wear gloves when I went out. After undergoing a transplant, I took off my gloves. I must have confidence. This is no big deal. After undergoing a transplant surgery last year, Mongbo struggled trying to save the expenses on hiring caregivers. Fortunately, he cannot cross Ziji, and he's very grateful. When I was struggling, I was unfortunate. However, I was also fortunate because I came across Ziji when I was most helpless. In four months, volunteers have visited him six times. Mongbo is no longer depressed, and he even started to adopt a vegetarian diet. His mother told us that Mengbo is adopting a vegetarian diet now. If he ate meat, he said he would feel guilty. He said, look, as I'm not eating meat, my blood-related index still increases. On this day, he was invited to share his experience at the Ziji office. His mother has brought dishes to prepare. I had made some food to thank the volunteers for helping us. I got up at some time past 4 a.m. to prepare them. Facing illness, they are no longer passive. They will embrace a more optimistic attitude to move forward. In Xiamen, Fujian, China, Mr. Wei, who lives alone, suffers from mental disorders for more than 10 years. After his wife and children left home, his living environment was messy. So the volunteers were mobilized to clean up his home. <laughs> This place is dirty, messy, and filled with foul smell. Volunteers' visit this time is to return Mr. Wei, who lives alone and suffers from a mental disorder, a clean and comfortable home. However, it is hard to imagine a lot of courage is needed for volunteers to accomplish this mission. <laughs> Nobody knows how long the dry cat body has been there stinking. 
fascinating. I came here three or four years ago. Back then, I could smell the foul smell before reaching the door of the house. The picture has always stayed in my mind. So I thought that if I didn't walk in today, didn't take this step, then the image would stay in my mind forever. So I take the courage to come. We have overcome what we think we can't. In fact, when you come once, twice, or three times, and finally you will get used to it, and the environment will no longer be stinky. Instead, you would think your sweat or body is stinky. After the cleaning, volunteers work together to move in the bed set. Mr. Wei smiles shyly and makes an agreement with the volunteers. Making changes step by step with volunteers' company, he never feels lonely. A mother and daughter pair from the Taichung Tanzi area had trouble repairing their home due to their congenital disease. The roof leaks and there were mice and snakes. In the past year, they've been renting a place instead of living in their own home. Thankfully, city volunteers helped them so they can return home. Mrs. Lee's home does not get enough sunlight, and the ceiling is in disrepair with wooden planks falling off. I use a wash basin to catch the leaking water, and it's not enough. Sometimes mice fall down too. The approximately 63 square meter home has been sectioned off into two bedrooms and two living rooms, but it's cramped so that only one person can pass through at a time. Cici is here to help, but they have to clear everything out first. Due to the narrow space in the home, volunteers relay out the items. The home is adjacent to the curve of a busy street where cars come and go. The volunteers must be careful to avoid the traffic while clearing out the living room. After we cleared the living room, we also tore down a wooden wall so we can remove the bed and finally begin repair work for the leaky roof. The outpouring of help even came from the medical staff of Taichung City Hospital and their family. In our work messaging thread, the cleanup event was posted and those who had time volunteered to join. Mrs. Lee and her daughter both suffer from Bachat's disease, which causes blood vessel inflammation throughout the body. When her intestine is suffering from inflammation, she needs to stay at the hospital. She also often has surgery to clean up the lesions, so they cannot clean up after themselves much. The two are also prone to fever when inflammation occurs. The leaky home is frequently visited by mice and snakes. Thus, in the past year, the two have been renting elsewhere, not knowing where to ask for help. Thank you, Cici, for being so nice to us. Everyone is so kind. With the help of Cici, it only took half a day to clear out the space, and further repairs are now in the works. In Xingang Township, Jiayi, a single-parent senior father needs to take care of two mentally challenged children because they were unable to clean their home was filled with debris. City volunteers helped them clear out nearly 50 bags of garbage. The 6.6 square meter space is full of all kinds of debris, and there is no place to sleep. Mr. Xu, who has worked so hard to raise two mentally challenged children, is very distressed. I kill kids. The kids put whatever they picked in the room and did not throw it away. They also do not let anyone take it. They are born with mental disabilities. A number of volunteers work together to put the badly torn clothes and garbage into plastic bags and then keep the usable items. During the cleaning process, there were many crocodiles and mice crawling all over the floor. And finally, about 50 bags of garbage were cleared out. Today we helped Mr. Xu clear out the gathered items in the room so that his two sons can have a place to sleep peacefully. A clean and tidy bedroom is finally ready for them to stay with peace of mind. In recent years, as population aging became common, VR technology is now utilizing long-term care and medical care services. Far Eastern Memorial Hospital, along with NTU, combines nature scenery with VR, helping patients feel at ease. 
Gong Xuan, this is the EEG. You can understand the brain state. The other is metal. It's a bit rough and will be attached to your head. In different environments and under different mental states, let's test it first in a natural environment. Let's then go to an activity center for 10 minutes. Now let's see the results to further do comparison. Actually, in noisy environments, we have captured your relaxing emotions, dropping from 43 to 30. Now let's see the results. Even though we are in rest mode or a focused mode, our brain remains hyperactive. Therefore, our brain amplifies signals we receive and collects it throughout the process. Researchers from the NTU School of Forestry and Resource Conservation invited 34 participants over the age of 45 wearing VR goggles to view forests and city sceneries. After each simulation, data has shown the forest views provide positive results, where city views give results likewise. While viewing forest sceneries, negative emotions such as confusion, stress, and nervousness can be relieved. Viewing the city, however, increases negative emotions. For example, looking at water ponds, it actually provides relaxing effects. Forest, farm, and other similar views bring different effects. Of course, people have preferences, which would affect the outcomes whether biologically or mentally. Patients suffering from terminal illness are often limited by their physical condition, as it is hard for them to travel outdoors. And though hospitals have a designated garden on rainy occasions or hot days, many patients prefer to stay indoors. Utilizing VR for stimulation and palliative care wards, the simulation itself allows patients to enter a forest, making them for more ease while stimulating their parasympathetic system. Human and nature are closely interconnected, so you might feel comfortable in certain environments and feel stressed, uncomfortable in other places. This is proof to how close we are with the environment. Therefore, on the topics of caring for patients, in palliative care world, we must come in and bring them spiritual care. Counselors try to utilize VR imagery assisting patients to travel back to their hometown in a simulation. As of some patients are middle-aged, and their homes might be in the mid-south regions of Taiwan, even at Taidong or Hualien, many times because their children is a new Taipei city, it's hard for them to return home in hope of achieving a peaceful passing. Actually, they cannot make it back in time, since some of them might have poor conditions. The simile in human technology can actually spread warmth through its use, bring warmth and hope to terminal stage patients. The Southeast Asian students at the university have gathered to celebrate Songkran Festival. They have also prayed for a world free of disasters. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.